Hello guys, welcome to H2O, the A to Z of Chemistry. I'm Dr. Ritu Johar, your educator for this course on General Organic Chemistry and I hope you are enjoying this course with me. Today we will be starting with GOC part 2 lecture number 9 but make sure you watch the previous ones before doing this one. So far in GOC part 1 we've had a detailed discussion on the nomenclature of organic compounds and part 2 we are discussing isomerism. In the first eight lectures of this course, GOC part 2, when well, we've had a detailed discussion on structural isomerism and then we started the discussion on stereoisomerism and we have winded up with a discussion on geometrical isomerism. And now moving further, we will be starting with the discussion on optical isomerism. It is going to be about five to six lectures that I would be taking for you people so that you have a proper understanding of the concept. Well, this is going to be a topic which is going to be generally found, this is generally found that the students find it very difficult. Now, why do they find it difficult? Well, they find it difficult because they do not have a proper understanding of the concept. Otherwise, this is going to be something very interesting and something very easy. And because it is important also, it makes it more important for you people to have a thorough understanding of the concept. That is why we are going to spend five, six lectures understanding each and every concept and that we are going to do with proper notes, everything written for you because this is a PowerPoint presentation. So you will get each and everything written down. You're going to get so many diagrammatic representation of each and everything. It is going to be different types of diagrammatic representations that you will be learning in this lectures. And then you are going to understand each and everything with the help of models also. Because it is stereoisomerism, just like geometrical isomerism, so you need to have a proper understanding of the concept with the help of model, right? So that we will be doing so that it is everything perfectly clear to you people. Now, what are we going to discuss in this lecture? Well, we will be starting first of all with what are chiral molecules and then we will be discussing what are enantiomers and we will be discussing what are diastereomers. So first of all, let us begin with the study of chiral molecules. What are chiral molecules? So what are chiral molecules? Let us first of all understand with the help of what are chiral objects. And for that, I will be giving you first of all one line to read. Let us read that together. Everything has a mirror image, but not all things they are superposable on their mirror images. Now, what do we mean by this? Well, let us break this line into two parts. The first says that everything has a mirror image. And when I was writing this down, I just uh, had a memory of some movie which I had watched by I was probably quite small also. But I still remember that. And in that movie, what was happening was that there was a lady. She was sitting in front of the mirror dressing up. And then she hears somebody coming. She just turns her back to check who it was. And she finds it that it was a friend of hers. So she turns back. She talks to her friend. But all of a sudden, her uh, attention went to the mirror. She could see herself, but not her friend. She turned back again. She still talked to her friend. But now she could not stop looking back at the mirror. Because she could not see her friend. Why? Well, she was a ghost. So, what do we interpret from this? Well, what we interpret is that everything has a mirror image except ghosts, right? So, everything has a mirror image and carrying on further, but not all things, they are superposable on their mirror images. Now, what do we mean by this? Well, if you look at this image now, what you can see is that I have my left hand and my left hand, I place it in front of the mirror. And what I see is my right hand, right? So this is my left hand. I place it in front of the mirror. And the image that I get, well, that is of my right hand. All right. I hope you all can understand that my left hand and right hand, they are mirror images of each other. Okay. And now they cannot be superposed. What I mean is that if I keep one above the other, I will not be able to hide the image with the object, right? If I am superposing my right hand above the left hand, you can see some portion of my both hands. One is not able to completely cover the other, right? So this is what we mean that they cannot be superposed. 
the left hand is the object the right hand is its mirror image and we cannot superpose it not all things they are pose superposable on their mirror images where if you look at the other example i have a flask keep it in front of the mirror what i get is another flask in the image and both of them because they are identical to each other well they can be superposed if i keep them one above the other you will not be able to see the image it is just being completely hidden by the object flask i hope this is clear so some things you can superpose the other things you cannot so in 1894 william thomson which he is commonly known as lord kelvin he coined a word for the property of mirror image superposability and he defined an object as chiral if it is not superposable on its mirror image so what this means is if my left hand is not superposable on my right hand which is its mirror image well the left hand is also chiral and the right hand is also chiral right so this is my left hand this is its image i cannot superpose on it this is my right hand this is its mirror image i cannot superpose it so my left and right hand they are not superposable on their mirror images and hence we call them as chiral so from this what we can conclude is that a chiral object is one which is non superimposable on its mirror image just like the left hand is non superimposable image of the right hand right so they are both mirror images of each other if we try placing one above the other we will not be able to superimpose them so the left hand the right hand they are chiral objects some other examples can be the scissors the spiral staircase the screw threads the gloves and the shoes i hope you can very easily understand the gloves and the shoes because a right side glove you will not be able to put into your left hand a left side glove you will not be able to put it into your right hand similarly a left side shoe you will not be able to put it into your right foot and a right shoe you will not be able to put into your left foot for that what you require a right glove for a right hand a left shoe for a left foot i hope this is clear so the gloves and the shoes they are chiral objects but if you look on the other hand we have a chiral objects a chiral meaning not chiral and then they are not chiral they are identical to each other they are identical the object will be identical to its mirror image but well a better term explaining an a chiral object will be that an a chiral object has a superimposable mirror image why i am saying this to be a better line is because sometimes as you will study further you will realize that an object and its mirror image they may not look identical at the first look all right but when you are going to see it in a detailed manner when what you will be finding is that the mirror image and the object they will be superposable you will be able to see this as the lecture progresses i am not going to show it you just now all right but just remember that rather than saying that it is going to be identical to the mirror image it would be better to say that a, a chiral object has a superimposable mirror image then you will be absolutely correct here you can be sometimes incorrect also okay so more examples one you have already seen of the flask that we made a mirror image of the flask when we saw well they are looking also identical and when we superpose them one above the other they can be superposed we cannot see the image behind the object now i hope this is clear the other examples can be a table a fork a glass where we are having a chiral objects the image and the object they are superposable on each other right do you want to see some more examples let us see that so let us understand what are chiral objects and a chiral objects with the help of the english alphabets what you can see in the uh, front of your screen is the two alphabets a and the h 
there's a line in between which is showing that the other side we have the mirror image of the object so this is object a and this is its mirror image this is object h and this is its mirror image all right and what you can see is that the object and the mirror image they are identical to each other and when they are identical to each other we will be calling such object and its mirror image to be a chiral all right it is just like the flask you saw in the diagram they were identical to each other and hence they are a chiral now let us look at another example and the other example what you can see is that i have a p and its mirror image and l and its mirror image can you see that both the object and the mirror image they are not identical to each other right and when they are not identical to each other what do we say what we say is that the object and its mirror image they are chiral all right similarly now if you look at these two what you can see is that i have a c and its mirror image a b and its mirror image now these are also not identical to each other right i hope you can see that they are not identical to each other but yet they are still a chiral object and its image why are they now a chiral let us understand this the better definition i told you was that for understanding that an object is going to be chiral or not we have to superimpose the object and its mirror image if they superimpose each other we are not able to see one behind the other they are completely able to overlap each other when we call them to be a chiral and if they are not able to superimpose each other when well, they are going to be called as chiral so if i pick up this a now and keep it on its mirror image what you can see is just one a you cannot see the a which is behind now right so it has been able to completely overlap its image and therefore we call such objects to be a chiral when they are able to overlap each other when they are able to superimpose each other we call such objects to be a chiral all right so there is no handedness in them there is no left side there is no right side for them similarly you can do for this for the h also what you will be seeing is that you will not be able to see the h below so the object and the mirror image they are able to superimpose each other completely fine now you look at again the p and the l so what you can see is that if i try to superimpose the p on the l what i will be getting is somewhat looking like an a now it's not looking a p and i can see the image portion of the p below the object p so they are not able to superimpose each other completely therefore we call this p and similarly the l also will be happening this way so we are not able to superimpose them completely so they are called as chiral objects now the problem came when we came up to c and b now they are not the mirror uh, they are uh you cannot say that these two they are identical the but i am still saying that the c and the b they are a chiral objects why am i saying this so now what i have told you in the definition for chiral objects is that they should be superimposable in not superimposable sorry not superimposable in three dimensions all right now what this means is that supposedly now i lift up my c fine and i rotate it at an angle of 90 degree what you can see is that they are still not identical to each other all right now if i move it another 90 degree further total movement is now an 180 degree angle and what you can see now is that both of them they are looking identical to each other so in one dimension i could say that the c and its mirror image they were not identical but now in one dimension that i am able to see now presently is that they are looking identical to each other when this happens well we are going to still call the object and its mirror image to be a chiral 
they should be not superimposable in three dimensions. You will be able to understand this as the lecture proceeds, but I hope you can see that both of them, they are looking identical now, right? So I cannot say that they are not identical. It is just like I give you an example why this happens that uh, they are two brothers, okay? The C and its mirror image. And once they had gone out and the mirror image, C, okay, I'll call that as MC and a OC, okay. OC is one brother and MC is another brother. And both they had gone out and the MC gets lost. When the brother comes back, he tells his mother, ma'am, uh, mother, the MC has been lost. So the other gets very worried what to do. Uh, how are we going to find it? Up? So she tells that you should go in search for your brother. We just cannot forget that, that he's been lost. So he said, okay, I'll go. But tell me, how do I find him? So she said, just look at somebody around you who is exactly identical to you. And you, you will come to know that this is your MC brother. Okay, so the C goes out, he looks here and there. What he first encounters is this Wala MC. Okay, and he sees that, well, this he is not identical to me. He is looking different. So he just forgets it and he starts looking further. Then what he does is because he can move here and there, he keeps on moving here and there, he moves this way. Again, he encounters him, he says, no, this is not same like me. But then when he has moved to this position, what he finds is, well, they are seeing similar now. And he says, wow, you are just matching me, you are identical me, you are the MC. And well, they both meet each other and he takes back the MC to back home and they lived happily thereafter. So what this means is that the molecules where they are going to move in three dimensional space, we can be looking at the molecules from one angle and saying that they are not identical to each other. And when we look at them from another angle, we find them to be identical to each other. So we have to look at the molecules from a three dimensional perspective to understand whether they are going to be identical to each other or not. And when they are not identical to each other, we call them to be chiral, all right, like the P and the L. And yes, we can do this with the P also, right? So P can also move in a 90 degree angle and a 180 degree angle to check whether the MP is similar to it or not. So if you look at now, I have rotated the P at an angle of 180 degree. Fine. So you can see that. But still what you can see is the object and the mirror image. They are not identical to each other. Similarly, I can do this for the L as well. So what I will be doing is, well, this was my L. So I will be doing it this way. So this is my 90 degree, 180 degree movement of my object. And still what you can see is that the L and its mirror image, they are not identical. They were initially also not identical. Now also they are not identical to each other. And therefore, they are going to be chiral objects. And when they are identical to each other, they are going to be achiral objects. And then we can even move them at 180 degree angle. And we see that we find them to be identical. Then they are superimposing on each other in this dimension when we will be calling them as achiral again. So you will be able to understand everything as the lecture proceeds. But I hope with the alphabets, this is clear. All right. So the A chiral objects are going to be those which are identical to each other or they are superimposable on each other in three dimension. Whereas the chiral objects, they are going to be not superimposable on each other in three dimensions. Right. All right. So let us move further. So I hope now with the alphabets it's clear to you what are chiral objects and what are achiral objects. Now let us put this learning into the learning of chiral molecules. So applying Thomson's term to chemistry, we say that a molecule is chiral if its two mirror image forms, they are not superposable in three dimensions. Now what do I mean with this? For example, we have this diagram with us. And what I say is that this is a compound A, this is a molecule A, okay? Now I keep it in front of the mirror. What will I be getting? I will be getting its image. How will its image look like? Its image will look like this. 
which I have labeled as P. All right. So what you will be finding is that whatever pass you will be checking the distance from the mirror for object A, it is going to be opposite direction equidistant each and every element on B. Okay. So if we see this, this is a carbon, the black one. So, if you measure the distance of this carbon from the mirror, go the opposite side, the same distance, you will get a carbon. Similarly, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, a chlorine, a chlorine, a bromine, a bromine, a chlorine, and a fluorine. They will be equidistant from the mirror. Okay. So, now you have got one object and you have got this mirror image. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we are going to try to superpose them. Right. Just like we did the right hand and the left hand. So, can you see this and imagine that if I just keep this over here, what you will see is that this is my right hand thumb and this is my left hand thumb. You can imagine it that way. And when I'm going to put one above the other, these they are going to come up. They will not be able to overlap each other completely because they are not identical. They are just not identical as the P letter and the L letter. Okay. And well, if you try, because this is going to be a three-dimensional structure, so you have to try the superposability in all the three dimensions by rotating the molecule. Okay, so I will just now show you with the help of the models also, then everything is going to be very clear with you because now you have to imagine and then I'll show you the model, you will be able to see everything. But just imagine now that this is not superposable in one dimension. It is not superposable in any of the ways if it is possible. All right. So I will be calling this as a chiral molecule, right? A chiral molecule and its image. And if this is a compound or if this is a molecule, well, this is going to be its image. I hope clear. If I have a compound A, the B is its image and if I have a compound B, this is going to be its image and both of them, they are not superposable in three dimensions. So, we call them to be chiral. All right. The term chiral, Greek word, uh, which means hand. All right. So, the chiral is coming from a Greek word, which means hand. This is applied to molecular systems whose asymmetry results in handedness. So, what you can see is that if I have this carbon, everything that is surrounding here is different. So, this is an asymmetrical molecule. Right. And this is what has resulted in handedness. It is looking like my right hand. This is looking my left hand. And what I get is an, a pair of non-superimposable mirror image shapes. So if this is a compound A, this is a compound B, well, both of them, they are as if one is going to be the mirror image of the other. Just like my right and left hand, they are non-superposable mirror images of each other, but they are two distinct things. My right hand, my left hand, my compound A, my compound B. Both non-superposable mirror images of each other. So now, based upon this learning, I'm just going to reclassify isomers. First of all, isomers, they are different compounds which have the same molecular formula. Isomers, they will be of two types, constitutional or structural isomers and stereoisomers. Structural isomers, constitutional isomers, that means the one and the same thing. You have learned this. And these are going to be isomers which have atoms with different connectivity. Chain isomers, position isomers. In all of these, what you have seen is that there is a different way of the linking of atoms. And in stereoisomers, well, they have the same molecular formula. They have the same structural formula. They have a different spatial arrangement of atoms. And now, instead of having a conformational and a configurational isomers, what I'm just classifying this is into enantiomers and diastereomers. All right. Now, what are enantiomers? Enantiomers, they are going to be those stereoisomers which are going to be non-superimposable mirror images. Whereas diastereomers, they are going to be non-mirror image stereoisomers. All right. What do I mean by this? Let us talk a bit more in detail. 
So what are enantiomers and diastereomers? Enantiomers, they are going to be stereoisomers whose molecules, they are non-superimposable mirror images of each other and they are going to occur only with those compounds whose molecules, they are chiral. So first of all, enantiomers, they are stereoisomers. They will be having the same molecular formula. They will be having the same structural formula. There is going to be a difference in the spatial arrangement of atoms. So if I have a compound A and a compound B, now listen to me, I have a compound A and I have a compound B, right? I find that compound B is a mirror image of A and compound A is a mirror image of B. These are two different compounds, all right? And if I try to superpose them on each other, I find that they are non-superposable, okay? And that is what is the condition for chirality also. A molecule is going to be chiral. When we look at its mirror image, we find the object and the mirror image to be non-superposable. Fine. So molecule, this one is chiral. If this is its image and we try to superpose them, they are non-superposable. That you have already seen that they are non-superposable. All right. So this A molecule is also chiral. This B molecule is also chiral. Right. And they are a mirror image of each other. So, if they are a mirror image of each other, which is non-superposable, we will be calling them as enantiomers. One A and a B, both of them having same molecular formula. They are having the same structural formula because the same type of atoms, they are connected in the same fashion. It is only a difference in the arrangement of the atoms spatially. And how different? Well, one looks to be the mirror image of other, just like the left hand and the right hand. So A and B, they are two distinct compounds. They are two distinct compounds, which are stereoisomers, and they are a non-superimposable mirror image of each other. Okay, let us understand a bit more with the help of an example. But before that, I will just give you what are diastereomers also. Stereomers, well, they are going to be stereoisomers whose molecules, they are not mirror images of each other. And the best way to understand this is going to be with the help of an example. And the example is I have a cis 1,2-dichloroethene and I have a trans 1,2-dichloroethene. In this, what you can see is that these two, they are what? They are geometrical isomers. And you have learned just now in the previous lectures that geometrical isomers, they are stereoisomers. They have the same molecular formula. They have the same structural formula. They have a different spatial arrangement of atoms. We can check that also. We have two carbons bound to each other by a double bond. Two carbons bound to each other by a double bond. This carbon having a chlorine and a hydrogen connected to it. A chlorine and a hydrogen. A chlorine and a hydrogen. A chlorine and a hydrogen. Same atoms connected to same type of atoms. Right? What is different? Well, what you can see is this is the carbon-carbon double bond. On one side of it, you see chlorine, chlorine, and now here you see a chlorine and a hydrogen. So these are stereoisomers, first of all. But now if you look at them, a cis and a trans, are they mirror images of each other? No, they are not mirror images of each other. All right. And what we say is that diastereomers, they are stereoisomers whose molecules, they are not mirror images of each other. So if I draw the mirror image of a cis structure, it is going to be exactly identical to it, right? So this is its mirror image. The trans is not its mirror image. So these are stereoisomers, which are not mirror images of each other. Whereas for being in anchovers, the two molecules, they have to be mirror images of each other. The first thing is that they have to be mirror images and then they have to be non-superposable also, right? So I hope now this is clear to you. So from this, what you can conclude, a very important result is that geometrical isomers, they are always going to be diastereomers. So in this classification of stereoisomers, where do the geometrical isomers fit? Well, they will be fitting into the category of diastereomers. Any type of geometrical isomers, they are going to be diastereomers. They will never be enantiomers. Okay, I hope this is clear. This is very important. Now, very frequently this comes in the examination, so you have to remember it. 
So let us talk more about enantiomers, a little more details, little more example understanding. So first of all, enantiomers, they are generally produced in pairs. One is looking, if we assume one to be the object, the other is its mirror image. So they have always produced in pairs. Where are they produced now in pairs? Well, they are produced in pairs in a chemical reaction. A reaction always produces two enantiomers. But it is going to be very surprising for you that in nature, only one of the two possible enantiomers will be formed. Why in a reaction, two enantiomers they are produced? Why in nature, only one is produced? That is something that we will be learning a bit later, some lectures ahead. But just remember this for the time being. Okay. But till now, what you have learned, still there will be some questions which are disturbing you. Let me tell you those questions also and obviously the answers also. So some questions which can come into your mind after this discussion, which is still confusing you. Well, the first is what structural features must be present for two molecules to exist as enantiomers? So we have two molecules. We want to find out whether they are enantiomers or not. So what should be there in those molecules? Well, Enantiomers, they are going to occur only with compounds whose molecules they are chiral. Now, what are chiral molecules? How do we recognize a chiral molecule? A chiral molecule is going to be one which is not superposable on its mirror image. Okay, I hope this is also clear. A chiral molecule is one which is not superposable on its mirror image. What is the relationship now between a chiral molecule and its mirror image? Well, they are going to be called as enantiomers. So just now what you saw was the example of a compound A and its mirror image which we labeled as B. So one is an object, the other is its image. Both of them they will be together called as enantiomers if they are chiral molecules. All right, I hope this is clear. Fine. If it is still not, well, I'm going to still show you everything with the help of models to make it clear. Sometimes it's just sound all confusing, but do not worry. We are going to get through with a very clear understanding. So you look at this example now, which will help you understand everything very clearly. We have an example of butane 2 or, or 2 butanol. How do you represent this structurally? Well, you're going to write a four carbon chain because this has a but. All right, in all single bonds, so butane. A position number two is a all, that is a OH group. So this is how you will be drawing the structure for it. If I give you the molecular formula C4H9OH, you are going to make many compounds. I know that one butanol, two butanol, chain isomers, functional isomers, everything you will be able to make. I have no doubt in that. But if I tell you, just draw what all possible compounds you can make for two butanol. Well, you are going to say it is going to be one compound, this one. But well, if I tell you that this is not going to be one compound, it is going to be two compounds, then you need an explanation how. So what we do is, this is the structural formula. What we are now going to make is the spatial arrangement of these atoms. All right. So especially when you are going to arrange all these atoms, what you will be getting is that we have this carbon over here, this one, okay, this carbon. This carbon, you can see this is attached to a hydrogen and a OH, a OH and a hydrogen. It is attached to a methyl group, a methyl group, and a ethyl group, a ethyl group, right? I hope that you can see this. Now, what is the difference between these two is this tells me how these atoms they are arranged in geometrical isomerism also i told you about the wedge and dash representation so these ordinary looking lines well these are uh, representing this methyl and the ethyl group why are they represent looking like ordinary lines because this represents that this methyl group this ethyl group and this carbon all are in one plane okay and when they are all in one plane if you look at the OH, well, this is going to come outside the plane. This is be coming towards you. So we represent it by this solid triangle, which we call as a wedge. And the hydrogen, this will be going back from the plane of these three groups. 
all right and this we represent it by a dash again i will be showing you just now with the help of a model uh, so this thing will also get clear that why we are representing it in this way will the molecules actually look like this yes they will look like this so i'll just now show you also fine so this is the real representation the other way in which i will be representing this in my presentations is going to be a 3d diagram for it and in this 3d diagram again you can see that this black one is a carbon to this we have a hydrogen this one a oh this one a methyl group so ch3 a ethyl group this so all different colors they are representing the different groups of atoms which are surrounding this carbon this one right now let us draw the mirror image of these and check whether this molecule is chiral or not fine so what i do is i draw its mirror image i hope now you can see very well and understand that this is the mirror image different points of this from the mirror equidistant you will be finding the same type of atom fine so this is clear and now the next we draw the mirror image for this also so again you can see a hydrogen a hydrogen oh oh ethyl group and ethyl group ch3 ch3 they all are looking similar to each other right so this is a mirror image okay now if uh, i try to superpose them now i just bring this on top of this try to check it moving in all dimensions which i will show you actually also how we move it move it in all dimensions and we can find that these are not going to be superposable so now for the time being just assume that this is a chiral molecule and when i superpose on this it will not be superposable in any of the dimension they are not looking identical just like the p and the l and if i move them also well it will not happen like in the case of the b and the c that when we rotated them what we found was that they were looking to be identical whenever you are going to rotate this you will never find them to be identical so this is a chiral molecule this is also now a chiral molecule if this is not a mirror image but this is an actual molecule okay so this is an actual molecule representing two butanol this is also an actual molecule representing two butanol they look to be the mirror image of each other right and they are not superposable on each other so these are going to be two compounds the molecules they are chiral and they exist actually as two compounds and these two compounds we call them as enantiomers all right so now is the time to look at the models and understand everything that you have studied so far with this model we will try to learn four things first of all how do we relate this model to the two diagrams that we have drawn the next whether this is a chiral molecule or not and next what are enantiomers all right so the first thing let us compare this to the three dimensional diagram that we have so in this what you can see is that we have a black carbon right so this is a black carbon and similarly in the model also you will be able to see a black ball all right just let me see first of all on the diagram and then i will show you everything on the model then we have four different groups attached to this carbon a oh a hydrogen a ch3 and a c2h5 so if you look on the model as well you will be finding that we have a black carbon surrounded by four different balls these four different balls they are denoting the four different groups which are seen in the structure of butane 2 ball this is the carbon this is the methyl group this is the ethyl group all right this is the hydrogen and let this be the uh, oh group the functional all right i hope this is clear now even if i did not have this diagram how can we read this model right so you have to have a understanding what this model how is this signifying so you all know that this is a ch3 fine if this is a ch3 this means that this has one carbon it is connected by a single bond to the second carbon and then it is connected to by a single bond to c2h5 this would mean carbon number 1 carbon number 2 carbon number 3 and 4 in this orange ball so a four carbon chain all single bonds second carbon we have a oh group so this becomes butane to all now the next thing is how we read the diagram and correlate it with the model so what you can see is this ball there is this 
single bonds extending on to the pod. What this means is actually that these two groups, the OH and the C2H5, they are slightly ahead of the carbon. They are coming towards us. And these two, which are just behind the carbon, well, they are going backwards. So let us see whether this happens in the model or not. So what we have is this way. Fine. So what you can see is now this is the carbon. This is behind. And the two, the orange and the green ball, they are coming forward just like in the diagram. All right. And then the next what you can see is the hydrogen, the white and the methyl group, the blue, they are going backwards. So if you look at it this way, when I turn it, well, now you will be able to appreciate that these two, they are coming forward. Then the two, they are going backward. So this is how we represent it. Another thing what you can see in this model is that these two, well, they are oriented horizontally. These two, they are oriented vertically. Okay. The two which are going backwards, they are oriented horizontally. The two groups which are oriented vertically, they are coming forwards. If I just change the position, it would be the opposite. These two horizontal coming forward, the two verticals, they are going backwards. This is how we have a tetrahedral arrangement of the groups around the carbon. Okay, I hope this is clear. And you can correlate it with the three-dimensional image that you are seeing. Because you're going to see it so frequently, I am laying a lot of stress on it so that I do not have to bring the models again and again and explain to them how they would look actually. All right. So now you can have a fair understanding of that. And the next thing what you want to have a fair understanding is how do we represent it by a wedge and dash? Because that is also something that you will be doing so frequently. So in the wedge and dash, what I'm saying to you is that three, a carbon, and two groups attached to it, they are in one plane. And if now the ordinary looking lines, well, this is a methyl and a ethyl. So let us do it this way only. Okay. A methyl and a ethyl and a OH group coming forwards. So I'll just keep it. I'll just change the angle. Just a second. So you will be able to see it now. Okay. So what we want is the methyl, ethyl and the carbon touching this gray colored box. When they are touching this, all of them they are touching. And what you can see is that the green ball, this is coming towards you. And the hydrogen which I am holding, well this is going backwards. This is going even back this box lid that I have. Alright. So the this one coming out, this one going back and all these three in one place. So, which are in one plane, we are drawing them by an ordinary looking line. The one which is coming towards you, right? So, this is coming towards you. Out of the plane of the paper, we are representing it by a wedge, which is looking like the soil triangle. And one which is going behind the plane of paper, well, that we represent by the dash. Okay, I hope now this is also clear. These two representations that we do on the paper, this are clear to you. We will be talking more about it in further coming lectures also. But I hope now this is clear. So the next thing what we want is that what is a chiral molecule. So a chiral molecule is going to be one which is going to be non-superimposable on its mirror image in three dimensions. So for that what we need is another molecule or an, we have to draw make its mirror image. Alright. So if this is my molecule I make a mirror image of it this is what it will look like right this is what it will look like a blue a blue near each other uh, just if I put the angles also bit similar way so you will be able to see that a uh, orange a orange a green a green a white and white they are looking mirror images of each other just like the right hand and the left hand now if this is a chiral molecule, this means is that if I try to superimpose them on one another, well, they should not be identical in any respect. Fine. So what you can see now, do I, yeah. So you can see that here you can see that the blue and the orange, they are coming together here. The orange is hiding the blue, but they are not superimposable because they are not of the same kind. I can try rotating it like I did for the B and C just to check whether they do not come the same in any way. So here now you can see 
a white and orange coming together a orange and a white coming together the blue with the blue or green with the green i can try something more okay well it's just a second so now what you i'll do is i will make it the rotation in some other angle also so if i do it well this is one way i can just rotate it slightly now the orange and orange they are coming together but the green is coming with the blue so whatever way i may try well i will never be getting a similar structure in three dimension and when i am not getting a similar structure this means that they are two different molecules okay so this is a chiral molecule and a chiral molecule and its mirror image together they form a pair and this pair we call as enantiomer i hope now the whole discussion this is perfectly clear to you people now the only thing left is how do we understand that this molecule is a chiral molecule do we always have to make a model which is going to be looking like its mirror image and that to superimposing them on one another and find out whether they are going to be chiral or not we cannot do it in the examination obviously so we have to have some way in which we can understand that just looking at the molecule on a piece of paper how do we find out whether it is going to be chiral or not whether it will have an enantiomer or not so this is something which is still pending which we will be starting the discussion in the next lecture i am saying starting the discussion because it will not be complete in the next lecture i will have to take at least two lectures to explain you all the possibilities where you will be able to identify just looking at the molecule whether it is going to be a chiral molecule or not and if it is a chiral molecule it will be forming an enantiomer also all right so i hope this is clear so that would be all for this lecture i hope you have understood everything each and every concept is crystal clear in your mind and we are still going to continue the further discussion on optical isomerism we have not even learned the definition so far of optical isomerism so a lot is going to come up please be with me and for that if you have not subscribed to the channel please do that and click on the bell icon so that you get a notification the moment we put up the next lecture for you so see you again bye bye